Hello, community. It is great to be with all of community today. I'll tell you what, before we jump into today's big idea, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Over the last 18 months, we have been through, I mean, just a lot together. And what, what I love is you have stayed focused on the mission. I mean, one great example was our student summer camp. We had a record number 500, over 500 students register. Is that awesome? And then on top of that, at camp, we had more than 90 students say yes to Jesus and were baptized. I mean, it's so, so, so good. And even since then, we're seeing more and more students and adults be baptized. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your perseverance. And let's continue to stay focused on the mission of helping people find their way back to God. All right. It was a while back that they ran this just great news story about what I would call maybe the most unusual wedding banquet ever. And the story went something like this. A young lady, accompanied by her fiancé, went to the Hyatt Hotel to finalize everything they wanted for their wedding banquet. And the two of them, they poured over menu choices, they selected china and silver, they picked out the just right flower arrangements, and both of them had very expensive taste, and the final bill totaled in the tens of thousands of dollars. Well, after leaving a check for half that amount as a down payment, the couple's next task was to pick out their wedding announcements. Well, the day the announcements were supposed to hit the mailbox, the groom got cold feet. And he just burst out and he says, I'm just not sure. And then he added, you know, this is a big commitment. Maybe we should think about this a little longer. And she was furious. She threw the invites away, took off for the Hyatt. She was going to cancel the banquet. She gets there. The event manager couldn't have been more understanding. In fact, she even said, hey, honey, the same thing happened to me. And she told her own story of a broken engagement. But then she had bad news about the refund. She said, the contract, it's binding. You're only entitled to 10% back. So you really got two options. One is you can forfeit the rest of your down payment. Or two, you can go ahead with the banquet. I'm sorry. I mean, I really am. While she considered her options, she couldn't stand the idea of on her wedding day, that banquet being wasted on empty seats. It seemed kind of crazy, but the more the jilted bride thought about it, the more she liked the idea of just going ahead with the party. Now, not a wedding banquet, but some kind of a big, fun blowout. And then she got an idea. Ten years before, the same woman had been living in a homeless shelter. She got back on her feet. She found a good job, had set aside even a sizable nest egg, well, she'd already spent a ton on this banquet. And so she got this wild idea of using this opportunity to treat the down and outs in her city to a night on the town. And so it was on a summer night in June at the Hyatt Hotel that she hosted a party like that city had never seen before. The hostess, she made one change. She changed the menu to feature boneless chicken. I love this. She said, it's in honor of the groom. <laughs> Then she sent out invitations to rescue missions, homeless shelters. And that warm summer night, every seat was filled with people who weren't privileged with fine dining. And on that night, though, they dined on chicken cordon bleu. You know, Hyatt waiters in tuxedos served hors d'oeuvres. And people without homes got a night off from the hard life of the sidewalks. And instead, what they did is they sipped champagne, they ate chocolate wedding cake, and they danced to big band melodies late into the night. I love that story. Now, I want you to do this. I want you to imagine that scene, okay? Place it in your mind and remember it later when I share a very specific story that Jesus told us. Now, that news story, that news story kind of got me thinking. And here's what it got me thinking. There's something about important celebrations that make empty seats just unacceptable. Imagine this. Just try to imagine this. Imagine the Bears, all right? We're all fired up about Justin Fields, our new quarterback, right? Rookie. Imagine the Bears somehow make it to the Super Bowl, and they're playing, and there are empty seats. It's unimaginable. Or imagine the White Sox or the Cubs playing in the World Series, and there are lots of empty seats. It would never happen. I mean, just and fundamentally, nobody wants to throw a party or host a banquet in a room full of empty chairs. 
Well, that's why I'm literally standing in a room full of empty chairs. Now, no matter which of the four different expressions by which you're joining us, I want you to think of this. Think of an empty seat as an opportunity. Every seat is an opportunity. Now, wherever you're joining us from, I want you to look around. Go ahead and just take a look around, wherever you're joining us from, and find an empty seat. Find an empty seat. You might be one of our community locations in the city, Lincoln Park or Lincoln Square. Uh, you might be one of our community locations in the Burbs, Naperville, Plainfield. Maybe you're at Downers Grove or Montgomery, Aurora, Yorkville, or at Carillon. Wherever you are, find an empty seat in that auditorium. All right? Just find an empty seat. You got it? I want that to be your object lesson. Now, maybe you're joining us from one of our community freedom locations. If so, I want you to find an empty seat in the room where you are meeting. And if you're joining us as a part of one of our brand new 3C communities that might meet where you live or work or where you hang out, find an empty seat. And if you need to, just go ahead and pull a chair. Just pull a chair somewhere into the room so there is an empty chair there as an object lesson for you. Now, if you're joining us digitally on Community Online, like so many of you, this blue chair behind me, that could be your empty seat. All right, so everybody's got an empty seat you're focused on as an object lesson. Let me ask you this. What do you see when you look at an empty chair? What do you see there? And it might depend on where you are. Because if you're in an auditorium or, or a room, you might say, well, I, I see something that gives me a little more elbow space. Or if you're in a home or a place where you hang out, you might see it and go, well, that's something decorative. People seldom sit there. It's, it's a piece of furniture. But here's what I want all of us to see when you see an empty chair. When you see an empty chair, it's an opportunity. See, that's what occurred to that jilted bride. Those aren't just empty seats in that banquet room. Those are an opportunity. You see, an empty chair is never an empty chair. It's an opportunity. And her story got me thinking about us as a church. You know what? Here's the truth. We have thousands of seats. I mean, thousands of seats at our locations in prisons and our 3C communities. So many seats. And when you think about community online, we actually have the capacity for millions of digital seats. And really, I mean, if you invite people, we can expand the bandwidth and billions of seats, right? And if those chairs stay empty, it's a missed opportunity. And that might sound a little dramatic, but it's true. Because here's my experience. My experience is that God doesn't work in empty chairs. And this is one of the ways that God partners with us by asking us to fill them. If this chair behind me remains an empty chair, you know what it is? It's a missed opportunity for a friend to find hope who's going through one of the most difficult times of his life. It's a missed opportunity for a couple to receive help for a struggling marriage that could go either direction. It's a missed opportunity for a student to find community in a, in a season of intense loneliness and anxiety and isolation. See, for every one of those chairs that sits empty, there's someone not finding their way back to God. An empty chair is never just an empty chair because if it remains empty, it's a missed opportunity. But the opposite is also true. <laughs> Did you know this? Did you know our prayer team, I love this, our prayer team prays over every chair in all of our locations every week, touches every one of them, praying for what's going to happen there. And as you know, every week our online team, they gather before every service and they pray for every person who will log in, who will take up a digital seat. Why do we do that? Because when a person sits in that chair, we know some of us have experienced it. Amazing things can happen. Because when a person sits in this chair, we actually partner with God for an opportunity to change the world one life at a time. Now, what I want to do is I want to make this as practical as I possibly can for all of you. At all of our community locations, when you walked in today, you actually received a, a card uh, that's like this. It says, who are my five? Looks just like this. Go ahead and grab this, and if you want, uh, along with a pen. 
We'll be talking about this later on. Others of you, uh, if you prefer, or if you prefer, you can actually get this card at communitychristian.info. Communitychristian.info, you can get it digitally. Or I'll tell you what, if you want, you can just grab your phone and just open up, you know, to notes. Or go old school, pen and paper, either way. But here, here's the big, the big idea. Here's what I want. I want all of us to ask the question, who are the five? Who are the five people that I can invite to join me next Sunday? And we're going to get to that in a moment. All right, now I want to bridge that story. Remember I told you to think about that new story? Because Jesus told a story. And, and Jesus told a story that's often called the parable of the great banquet. But I think it might be better named the parable of the empty chairs. And, and, and here's the parable. Let me just read it to you. A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servants to tell those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field, and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. And still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered the servant, well, in that case, go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and, and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there's still room. Then the master told his servant, go out on the roads and the country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. See, see, what's happening here is, is Jesus is comparing the kingdom of God to this great banquet. And God, now God, he's the host. And he's gone to great lengths to prepare something absolutely fabulous for people to enjoy. The decorations are going to be breathtaking. The food will be exquisite. The best wines will be served. People are going to get to connect with, with each other. It's going to be this joyful celebration. I mean, it's going to be exceptional and extravagant and just spectacular in every way. But as the RSVPs come back, it's bad news for the host. People are busy. They're distracted. They have other things to do. And there are empty seats. So the host sends the servants out two more times to compel people to come in. Why? Why is the host so insistent that the seats are filled? Because the host knows that a party is not really a party unless there are people at it. Because it's not really about the food. It's not really about the decorations. It's, it's not about the wine. It's all about people. Here's something interesting. Um, do you know where Jesus was when he told that story, told that parable? I didn't know it until this week I started doing a little homework. He was actually at a party when he told this story. It was a party being hosted by a religious leader, a religious leader, a Pharisee. And this party was very exclusive. The only people who were invited to this party were the religious elite. And it was there, and I believe on purpose, that Jesus decides to tell the story of a different kind of party, where it's not just the elite, but instead all people, everyday people, everybody gets invited. Because Jesus' heart, it beats for all people. His kingdom is not just open to some people, God opens his doors to all people. And for God, the host, it's unconceivable to have this extravagant banquet without filling every seat. So he says, open it up to everyone. Make, make sure those who others deem unimportant, make sure they get invited. Make, make sure those who are hungry, that they get to come to the table. Make sure those who are forgotten, that they're welcomed in. Make sure that loner at the coffee shop gets an invitation. Make sure that annoying person at work, that they get one too. And re reach out to that, that family that's new to the neighborhood. This is a place at the banquet for everyone, all people. In other words, God says, no, fill the seats. Don't waste the banquet. And I think what Jesus is doing, and please take this in, he's comparing his church to this great party. And every weekend we try to do that. God uses us to prepare a, a banquet of community, a, a banquet of God's word, teaching, a banquet of God's music and, and worship, a banquet designed for our kids and another for our students, a banquet that really does, it requires 
hundreds of hours of creativity and planning and rehearsal and prayer. And, and it's a banquet. When, when you show up, you actually get to introduce, you can introduce the host who then offers you hope and joy and this abundant life. And here's what's awesome. What's awesome is every weekend, hundreds, not, not more than hundreds, thousands, thousands of people show up for this banquet. But every week, there are also empty seats. And God, as the host, can't bear the thought of his banquet being wasted. Because empty seats that stay empty, that's a missed opportunity. And so what does he do? Every week, he sends us back to work. He sends us back to our schools. He, he'll send us back to our neighborhoods to compel people to join us at the banquet. And it's not a banquet for a religious elite. It's for all people, right? Young and old, rich, poor, black, white, every shade in between, Republican, Democrat, Sox fans, Cubs fans, Bears fans. I'm still thinking about the Packer fans. But it is, okay, for the spiritually strong as well as, as, well as the spiritually doubting. It's, it's for the ones who've been healed and the ones that are still sick. It's for the ones who are loved by all and the one who feels marginalized every moment of every day. All right, here's what I want you to do. Wherever you're joining me from, take a look at that seat again. All right, take a look at that seat again. Hear me on this. I want you to take this personal. I think God wants you to take this personal and feel it deep inside you. There's, there's, there's this, oh no, someone's missing out on the banquet. And I'll tell you what, I think when we get what's at stake here, what's at stake in this life, what's at stake in the next life, it's then we become obsessed with, man, I, I gotta get people to this banquet. Let me ask you this, okay? Reflect on your own experience. How many have ever had the experience of sitting in a celebration service at church, and when it's done, you have this nagging sense like, oh man, I wish so-and-so would have been here with me. You ever had that? Because then maybe you're thinking, you know, it could have so helped them come to grips with how to handle this addiction. It, that might have been the talk. That might have been the experience that would have saved their marriage. That, that was exactly the hope they needed. That, one, that might have been a, the, the, the time where, and you know the name of that person would have said yes to Jesus and could have changed all of eternity. I'll tell you what, if you've been around community for a while, I think all of us, we've had that experience. That empty chair, okay, that empty chair is an opportunity for someone to taste the goodness of God. All right, two things just come glaring out at me about this parable that I hope challenges, it challenges me and it will challenge you. Okay, two things. First, okay, we gotta fill an empty seat. We have to take our own seat at the banquet. I mean, we live in a world that provides countless reasons to do something other than be at a celebration service on Sunday. And many of the times, I think we find ourselves making excuses just like the people in the parable. And even though there are multiple things pulling at our lives, we have to make an intentional decision of this is a priority that I will take a seat. And here's the thing. We've made some adjustments in the last year as a hybrid church now. We're all about making church accessible to you. You can either show up in person or you can show up online. Either one. But here's the deal. God won't do much with an empty seat. But each time we... Okay, take a seat. Here's what you do. You open yourselves up to the wonderful things that God can do and wants to do in your life. That's the first thing. All right, here's, here's the second big takeaway. Here's the second big takeaway. God is sending us out to invite others in. And I'll tell you what, you read the Bible. He is relentless about this. Just go back and look at that story. He is relentless about this. He wants every seat filled. And I love what theologian N.T. Wright says about Jesus' story. Here's, here's what he says, his commentary. He says, It isn't enough to say that we ourselves are the people dragged in from the country lanes to our surprise to enjoy God's party. That may be true, but party guests are then expected to become 
party hosts in their turn. The truth is that there are too many Christ followers today that believe they're only guests at the banquet. But the truth is, if you've been to the banquet, now you're a host. Here's what I want, hopefully to motivate you, and it did me. I want you to hear a story that reminds me of why, why I want to be a host and why empty seats are opportunities. It was the invitation by his mom to take a seat with her to watch community online that changed Joey's life. Later on, it was a seat at our location in Naperville where he decided to be baptized. And here's his story. My name is Joey Asi. I am 37 years old. I've been coming to community now for just under a year, 100% thanks to my mom. And this place just feels like home. About 2007, I blew out my knee and I was introduced to prescription pain medication for the first time and it completely overtook my life. It made me forget who I was. It crushed me. My wonderful wife had given me a lot of chances to try to figure this thing out and I kept stumbling. So shortly after Thanksgiving last year, she asked me to leave the house. So I moved in with my parents. My mom brought me with her to community. We would do church in my, <laughs> in my parents' living room. Uh, my mom and I, and I was just captivated by the music, the, the, the messages, the way things were delivered, how real and practical it was. And it didn't take me long to realize that so much of what I was trying to do in my recovery was being done here. And, and it just, the two meshed really well. Hillsong song United has a song called Wonder. And there's a lyric in that second verse that just spoke to me. And it just hit home so hard that you know, baptism meant almost that second life. And he says, coming out, coming out of the water with the old one left behind. And, and that's, what, that's how I felt today. It felt first like I was right where I was supposed to be. I do have a second chance. I'm, I'm not defined by my past. And just the minute I came up, it was, it was, it was that, that overwhelming feeling of clarity. And to see that love, to see that affection around me, I, I didn't feel bound. I didn't feel tied down by those chains anymore. I felt like I had another shot. All right, so here's the challenge. Next Sunday, we are planning to host a very special banquet called Church. <laughs> and actually, we're starting a brand new series. It's a brand new series we're calling Searching for Answers. And I, I'm very excited about this series. It's a perfect one to invite somebody to. We're actually going to address the top questions that people search for on the internet and give them biblical answers. Some of the things, top questions that people search for on the internet are things like, how do I deal with anxiety? What should I do with my life? This next one was kind of a surprising one, top search. How do I read the Bible? And it starts next Sunday, September 12th with how do I deal with anxiety? And I'll tell you what, God would like to fill every physical seat and every digital seat possible. Because again, remember what we said? Empty seats, what are they? Opportunities. So here's the deal. Invite the people in your office, either in person or online. Invite the neighbor, okay, on either side of you. Actually, my neighbors next door, this last year, by invitation, they started attending online. Um, invite the waitress at your favorite restaurant. Invite the barista at the neighborhood coffee shop, the bartender at the corner pub. There is a physical or a digital seat for every last one of them. And invite those friends who used to come to church but haven't been back yet. Now, maybe they're ready now to show up in person, so invite them. And if they're not ready to show up in person, invite them to join us online. <laughs> invite that family member who's been so resistant. Maybe, 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 maybe this will be the time they will actually fill a seat. As we look to September 12th and the start of this new series, let's challenge one another to fill these seats with friends, family members, and coworkers. All right. Hopefully you have your card, either uh, the one you got or maybe one digitally or maybe you just picked up a pen or you opened up your phone. But I want all of us to ask the question, all right? Who are the five people that you can invite to join us next Sunday? And I want us to do this. I want us to take a moment right now and just write down the names of five people that we'll commit to inviting. It could be to any one of our four expressions. Think about your friends, neighbors, coworkers, family members. Think about, take a look at who are the last five people you text. Invite them. 
And remember this, they don't even have to be in Chicagoland to join us online. They could be anywhere in the world. And you don't have to be in Chicagoland to invite people. I invited someone in the Houston airport this week to join me for Community Online this week. <laughs> Maybe you take a look at who are the last five interactions you had on Facebook or Instagram and invite them. So just let's do this. Let's, let's take a minute and write down the five names of people that we're committing to invite. Let's do it right now, all right? All right, who's your five? Now, please hear this. We are not saying that sitting in this chair is the only way that someone's gonna find their way back to God. No, God, I've seen God work in so many different ways, but I'll tell you what, it is a way. And it's a way that's happened for a lot of us. And it's a good way, it's an important way. So let's not miss the opportunity. Let's not let that chair sit empty. I want you to just imagine for a moment, okay? That next Sunday, one of your five, one of your five is sitting in one of our seats. And I want you to kind of picture them. Picture them nodding their head when they hear something that speaks to their hearts and they're having that aha. Or imagine them kind of tilting their head a little bit as they've experienced something they never experienced before. And maybe for some of you, it begins to bring a, some emotion. Or think of them actually beginning to feel, they can actually feel God's trans, transformational love kind of take hold of their life. Imagine that. Now imagine this, imagine every seat filled with someone beginning or continuing that journey back to God. An empty seat is never just an empty seat. It's an opportunity for God to work. And so let's all of us, let's all of us partner with God and invite people to sit in the seat and let's watch God work.